Welcome back, everybody, and a special welcome to my subscribers, the best on the planet. Uh, it's a cloudy day here in Richmond, a little cool. I just got off the golf course, hence my dress. Uh, but I wanted to get this message off to you so that you can consider this important principle in dealing with an ADHD child or teen. Uh, so let's get the uh, PowerPoint keyed up here. And that is the idea of the need to talk a lot less to your children or teen and instead use more abbreviated speech and more physical contact in order to make a connection to your child or teen and to get your point across. So as the slide indicates, shut up, stop talking so much and instead shorten your message and make it much more influential by having some physical contact with your child. Now, why do I think this is important? First of all, we've done a lot of research on the family interactions of children and teens with ADHD. And what we find among a variety of differences in these families is that parents talk too much to a child who has an executive function disorder, an attention deficit disorder, who isn't going to be paying much attention to a lot of verbiage, and a child who has a performance disorder, as I talk about in my other lectures. So ADHD is not information deficit disorder. It's not a problem with knowing what to do. So giving more information, giving more knowledge, talking at your child, nattering, nagging, reminding, and just throwing verbiage at them isn't going to get them moving when it comes to getting tasks done or following through on their promises and commitments. So stop talking so much. Information is not the problem. Remember, it's a performance disorder. It's a problem with doing what you know. So we need to find a way to get the information you want across to the child in a more effective way than just throwing a lot of verbiage. And I know sometimes the reason for the excess language by parents is that the parents have the same disorder as the child and excessive talking is often part of the ADHD symptom presentation. But even in the many families where the parents don't have ADHD, they still seem to talk a lot more to their kids and teens. I think part of that is we, we get a little lazy. It's easier to throw language at a child than it is to get up, go to them, and begin to enforce, if you will, or at least convey the information we have in a more effective way that gets them moving. It's just easier to stand still and yell, scream, natter, remind, and cajole. Also remember, because of their executive function deficits, you're dealing with a child in which language isn't going to be very powerful at controlling behavior. Don't forget that there's a verbal working memory deficit that goes with ADHD. And therefore, giving them more verbiage for them to hold in mind and follow is going to be coming at them through this weakness of verbal working memory that's not going to be very effective. So because of that, I want you to talk less and touch more. And the more that you can convey your information in brief but effective statements, the more likely it is you're going to be able to get your point across and have your child or teen comply with what you want them to do. So uh, here's what I would like you to do. Uh, rather than talking so much, instead go to your child, put your arm around them or put your hand on their wrist or arm affectionately to get their attention. So you go to them, you make contact with them, but in a gentle, affectionate way. This gets their attention. It also communicates concern and intimacy. And then look them in the eyes, make that personal connection with their mind through their eyes. Think Clint Eastwood level of eye contact and confidence. Briefly, Say what you want to say. Keep it very short. Is it an instruction, a reminder, praise, or a reprimand? Whatever it is, keep it short, keep it sweet, get to the point, 
And if you'll do that while you're making contact with them, it's more likely that your information, your language is going to get into their mind and have a more powerful effect on changing their behavior. So go to them, have contact with them, look them in the eye, say what you want to say, keep it short and businesslike. If you need to, have them repeat it back to you. If it's a longer chore or a longer request, maybe you can give it to them on a three by five file card that lists the steps of what you're asking them to do, like clean their room, for instance. But otherwise, just a short, direct statement is enough. I think you'll find that this will get your information over to them a lot more effectively than a lot of talking, yelling, nagging, and cajoling them is likely to do. I hope you find this tip useful in raising your child or teen with ADHD. Please join me again later this week for another video on dealing with ADHD. Thanks so much and be well, everybody.